Hello and welcome back to OT the podcast. We're going to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. I'm Andy Green. I'm Felix Schultz. Andy, how are you doing this fine morning? Mate, it has been a whirlwind since the last episode. Everything's happening. Yes. My inbox is overflowing with emails and invites and requests. Why, Andy? What's happening in your life? Well, I am, of course, talking about Watches and Wonders 2024. I've got the invite. I've got the call. I have to dust the boots off, come out of hibernation, uh, out of yep, even make retirement. Sure the, uh, the dress shirts fit over that. Hot, hot tip, Felix. They don't. So that was. <laughs> it's a rush of like thoughts when you get a a call up like this. One of them yes. is, what do I, what do I wear, what do I get? Uh, so yeah, my first point of call after getting the official invitation was trunk tailors here in Melbourne. Have to. Nice. Have to yep. get some yeah, get some clothing, yeah, mate. I mean, you're on a clock. It's when is it? It's April, mid-April. Eight weeks, yeah. Eight weeks lead time, which they can accommodate. So says a lot about them and they a lot about, about me. Uh, so yes, Geneva. I think it's six mm-hmm. nights. I want to talk about it in a second. I want to dive into what's happening, mm-hmm. what the plan is, why this is, why I'm not going. For yeah, one of them. it's very very rude. Be cancelled. Um, before that, though, uh, we're still uh, on our video kick. We're mm. working it out. Thank you for those people who sort of gave feedback to the to our inaugural proper video episode last week. Uh, we're, we're trying some. You know what? The internet in Australia is pretty terrible, yep. and so we're trying to work our way around that. But the other thing to note is about halfway through this this little chat, we're going to go to a guest from the ever loving, ever giving <laughs> Dubai Files. We don't have video for him, so you're going to see like a little, some sort of little funky animation or slideshow or something. Holding pattern. Yes. But the gift oh, sorry, that keeps on go. giving. The gift that keeps on giving your trip to Dubai Watch Week. This guy, I, I have here the business card of uh, this week's guest. Mm. Perhaps the best job title I've ever seen on a business card uh, for Ming Tian, who is the man whose name is on the dial of Ming Watches, uh, one of the founders. But that's not what it says. He doesn't. He's, he doesn't have the title CEO. He doesn't have the title. I don't know. Founder. What, all this sort of stuff. He has the title Supreme Overlord. Oh, that's I respect. I mean, he is a little the, bit intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love a supreme title. Uh, my my second dog, her dad, supreme champion of Australia. Is that the dog's name or the title? His name's Friday. Actually, okay. thank God it's Friday is his full name. TJF. Yeah, Supreme Supreme Champion Samoyed of Australia. So wow. maybe. Wow, so your your dog has big shoes to fill. Yeah, she does. She Well, she she did win Best Young Pup before um, she came into my life. So she's a retired like, show dog, just like oh. I was before Watches and Wonders 2024. Mate, I think this is the perfect segue for, for the young pup to make his first Geneva <laughs> Watches and Wonders debut. Um, this, this is a show you have not been to before. So you've, you've done Basel world in the past. Yep. Uh, so you, you know what, how it works, you know, what goes down, but you've not done S I H H S I H H slash watches and wonders. This is great because it's a, they don't let anyone in. It's a, it's what they do now, but you know, for the, for the press days, they don't, it's That's an entirely doing. different kettle of fish. How are you feeling about it? What are your thoughts? What are you What are you nervous about? What are you excited about? Take a seat. So, yeah, you're right. Back pre-pandemic, which was sort of the last fair fair run I had, SIHH, which if you've gotten to watch it since then, was sort of the the other rival fair, sort of Richmond mostly. Some Richmond was at watch, uh, Basel World, but most wasn't. It was just a weird thing. And then obviously the pandemic happened and then sort of this merger happened and Watches and Wonders was born. But SHH was, yeah, you're right. It was always invite only, pretty exclusive. Had a dress code. I mean, dress I, code, I used to wear a tie. Felix would wear a try. And it was very exclusive, but it was the second trip and it was pretty close to Basel. And so you sort of, for me anyway, I sort of had to pick which one to go to. And Basel was always a bit more fun and, yeah, Rolex. It's, and it's easy to get into as well because you have, you, you, you if, if you're not aware, you, as a media representation representative, sorry, you have to be, invited to go and yep. the brand sort of there's a there's a financial like they will cover your maybe your accommodation maybe your flights maybe you know there's there's expenses on them for mm. having someone attend so you can't just rock up like uh some people i know have and so say hey i want to get into SIHH mm. you have to you know be accredited and all that sort of stuff so it's a bit more of a palaver yep 
hoops to hoops to jump through. And so I never I never got around to it. There was sort of talk a few years and, and again, it just became difficult timing wise. I couldn't really, you know, jet over to Geneva twice in a year. Uh, it's not your day job. It's not your full time job. That's it. So. That's it. And then sort of, you know, the world opened back up, Watches and Wonders was formed. The the timing wasn't right last year or the year before. It was just a little bit tricky and here it is. So it is just as chaotic as I remember Watch Fest to be, if not a little bit more chaotic because the time, I feel like we would do yeah. Basel for over a week. It was sort of seven or eight days when we'd go. Now it's sort of three days on the ground, a couple of manufactured tours, and then you're out of there. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty full on, but I'm trying to figure out how to make the most of it. There's going to yep. be the things I'm excited for that I can talk about now. I'm going into Zurich so I'm flying into Zurich a couple of days early. Mm-hmm. Thank you to IWC to do a manufacturer tour. Yep. That's going to be good. That's going to be good because I want to see that manufacturer legitimately ever since they sort of announced it, they did a redesign. It looks quite cool. I'm sure it's grown quite a bit. When it first opened, it was sort of under capacity as far as staff go and now it's sort of, I think. Bursting in the seams maybe. Who knows? Well, you'll find out. I'll find out. So I'm excited to do that. I've never been to Zurich, so that's also cool. I've never actually been into Geneva. Yeah, 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 it's only Basel. I've only ever been to Basel. Yeah. Uh, which is barely counts. Oh, this is cool. This you got to do. This is sorry to, to sort of you know go on a tangent. Will you have any time just to like have an afternoon little wander around a city? Or well, that's the that's the struggle you face because as soon as people find out you're going, you start to get a lot of emails around. <laughs> hey, and I'm sure I'm going to get more because I know a lot of brand people listen to this podcast. So I'm going to get more emails if you hadn't realized my name was on the list. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to keep a bit of time to catch up with, you know, with friends and, you know, associates over the years. The last day that I fly out, I don't fly out until pretty late in the afternoon. So I reckon I'd have a half day of, yeah, of meandering. Stroll. Yeah, put my name down at, you know, a few boutiques for watches that were just released. I'm sure no one else will be doing that at that time. Um, but IWC Manufacturer, I'm excited for. There's a few events kind of sprinkled throughout the evenings, getting all the, all the kind of key you know, and important brands that I really want to kind of catch up with booked in. I've got to leave a bit of time for the independents that are going to go and be there that you can't really kind of get to through the main portal. And then to finish the trip off, something I was very jealous that you got to do that I didn't. Mm. Cartier Manufacture Tour. Booking it, bookending it. That is the, see. that makes the whole trip worth it, if I'm honest. Really? I mean, how cool. How yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll, and th- and this is this is really great because you've not done any manufacture tours, so you've not not seen the the industrial watchmaking machine in progress. And then you'll have two and quite different sort of. Not that I've been to IWC, different takes on it, different you know approaches. You'll yeah. Be, well, be a seasoned expert for someone who's been talking about watches for coming up on a decade. I have yeah. never <laughs> seen. I don't know. I've never seen how they make. So <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Uh, what else? I mean, what else? It's going I get to watch heaps of movies on the flight over. It's pretty, pretty good going via Doha both times. So it's like only it's, twenty. It's a pretty good time schedule situation. They could have put me on a thirty-hour kind of transit, and I think it's sort of around twenty hours of flights, few hours of stopover. So it seems pretty, pretty good on that front. Already getting some good interview spots lined up with nice. some people. Plenty more friends going to be there. Gonna be gonna. I'm building out a bit of a rig so that I can get sort of you know audio on the ground yeah. like you did just to take us through for the rest of the year. I'll have an iPhone. I'll have a tripod. I mean, it's gonna be yep. plenty of content for our Substack as well. I'm thinking. I'm thinking there's some stuff Substack that'll come from it. Yeah, sick. So I'll be shooting you over a bunch of stuff as well. Yep. Uh, all the OGs. A bit of social media stuff. You're gonna have to be me. Well, well, all the OGs is gonna be there as well. So I'm already sniffing around. You know, James Stacy, Tony Trainer. Chris yep. Hall, yep. Asher. The, the the trick is you, you, the challenge will be, and you know, um, finding time. Yeah. Like uh, we spoke to, we I oh, really wanted to meet Tony Trainer last time. Like I never met in person. Um, we managed after like several days of texting each other to find a fifteen minute window <laughs> where we were both we could meet out the front of Cartier and you know we could we could have a quick ah oh, you know sort of chat and that. That that's hard. Like, I mean, it's it's not a. I know you know this is. I mean, this is sort of for for the podcast because we've obviously been talking about this a lot. Um, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm obviously not going. Um, uh, so otherwise, it'd be the awesome twosome. Um, maybe maybe in the future. Mm. Um, uh, it's challenging. It's it's a dynamic timetable. It is. You yeah, know, I you'll mean, have a. 
you'll get a text from someone who you've never met saying, um, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah with blah, blah, blah brand. Unfortunately, your interview subject isn't available uh, until 11.59 on Thursday. Can you still make that? I'm like, no. Yeah, so, well, that's the thing I'm, 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 looking, I'm seeing now is you've got, you know, you've got a kind of portal where you book the key stuff that's available to book through the portal, but then there's off menu, right? There's, there's a whole bunch of off menu stuff that you kind of line up yourself and you kind of have to protect the space in that calendar, then also figure it out, then also deal with time zones and you get sent calendar invites in a different time zone that doesn't quite sync up and you, it's, it is a beast to manage. So I think I've got the foundations laid down. I've got a pretty it good... Looks good. Got a pretty good idea of you know the things and people to say. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best to have have fun and not you know work too hard. Other than for for everyone listening in who's keen to kind of see, but yeah. And, and and speaking of listening in, I'd be interested. Uh, you know, as we've sort of mentioned, there's a lot of uh, well travelled people listening to this. Also, one or two watch executives. Yeah. Um, any advice? You can uh, you can comment on our Instagram. You can you know, comment on our YouTube. Wherever you're watching this, essentially, you can probably comment, um, or you can just sort of you know DM us if you have any hot tips. Maybe it's you know here's one that I'd like to throw out. If any vegans uh, that live in Geneva are listening, Andy's going to find that maybe a bit of a challenge. I don't know. Could be interesting. Uh, Could be interesting. So and if you have interview opportunities or you want to jump on the pod and you're going to be there. Link up. It's funny. I messaged Tony you, Trainer, Felix. No, no, no. You're, you're going to regret this because the one person working for Leroy Lapo Bom Bom Bom, Bom yep. who, uh, you know, they're going to send you 50 emails a day, Andy. It's possible. Uh, I was talking to Tony Trainer about going, actually, and he said, yeah, it was great. I was at a fondue event adjacent to Felix. Yes. That's, adjacent. That's revolution fondue dinner. And I said, being adjacent to Felix is a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool i mean and that's it like yeah it's uh it's a really interesting thing um your first one it's it's i'm i'm, I'm really excited to see how how you find it uh and not i don't want to sort of like obviously i'm doing what i can to help you like you know like the you know the, the stuff that you don't learn or you yeah. never get told until a few years in like these people give you the great press gifts yeah, these people all you know all that all that stuff that really matters um, but also I want, you, you know, I'm really interested in like your <laughs> fresh take. Send me out to, you know, fly on my own. You're just pushing me out the nest. It's finally little, time. Little baby bird here. <laughs> you're on your own. It's, it's really exciting. I'm really, I'm really keen for it. And I suspect you're going to do a so much better job. <laughs> <laughs> I remember to get my phone out and take a, a picture of oh. <laughs> 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 no, it'll be good. It'll be good. Good uh, cohort of Aussies going as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good crew. Ask me once I'm jet lagged and I'm haven't eaten for 20 hours and I'm tired. Oh, yeah, we can I do those, that. I enjoyed that live uh, recording from, from Geneva last time when it was like six in the morning and yeah. I had no voice. Yep. You were just hating life. The show notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should find that. Uh, anyway, speaking of, uh, speaking of what I've been up to, what have you been up to? You got anything exciting? <sighs> No, look, I mean, honestly, not really. Like it's, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, there's a bit of deadlines happening. We've got some work sort of on the horizon that we're sort of trying to prepare for. Um, I don't know. I had a note here, like the Super Bowl. Is that something we should talk about? I don't know. Someone was carrying a Birkin bag that was, was newsworthy, but I don't have anything else, Andy. I'm really sorry. Well, I'll give, you, back. I'll give you a quick reco. What do you, what do you got? The Brother's Son on Netflix. The Brother's Son. The Brother's Son. Uh, action. Good kind of like uh, martial arts action energy mixed with comedy. Mm. Justin okay. Chien, uh, Michelle Yeoh, a bunch, okay. among, among a, um, amongst a whole bunch of, you know, really kind of amazing cast. It is, there's watch relevancy to it, but it's sort of like maybe eight episodes and it's a bit of a sleeper hit. It's sort of like a Taiwanese... Uh, immigrant kind of story, but it's, yeah, triads. There's some watches. So there's a couple of scenes where watches come into play. At one point, a triad boss gives, you know, a loyal soldier a obviously hor horrible fake gem set Daytona. Nice. Not that loyal a soldier. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, as a, I don't think they knew, but as a reward for, you know, some betrayal, which was which was quite good. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I haven't watched one of those kind of, 
just silly, funny martial art movies in a long time. It reminded me a lot of sort of Jackie Chan stuff that I used to get around yeah. when I was a kid. And it was just kind of a, a little uh, serious enough that you bought into it, but that's it. That's where it stopped. You've, you've accepted the whole concept and idea and then you're like churros play a massive part in it. Discovering churros is a, is a huge and important part of the story. So sure. Uh, you've just reminded me, I do have one thing. I don't know if it's a recommendation, but it is some pop culture I've consumed in the last you know week. Um, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Okay. So Zack Snyder, you're familiar with Zack Snyder? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. 300, lots of the DC stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rebel Moon is basically, he, he wanted to d- direct Star Wars and they wouldn't let him. Um, so he did it himself. I love it. He also, it, so he's made, this is the first part of, a, I'm hoping, a two movie series. Um, it's very sort of space opera and stuff. It is also quite terrible. Um, which, which it's probably why they really, didn't let him do it, isn't it? Well, he also wrote it. I think the writing is the problem. Like he's got such a visual style, like it's really over the top and that sort of, you know, lots of glistening muscles and mm. you know, explosions and stuff. But oof, it could have been good. It, it could have been like and the amount of money this thing must have cost. It's just like a, a wasted opportunity. But anyway. He, he probably horror? think it's great. So don't waste your time I mean, and check it out. Do, but I mean, it, yeah, if you think Rebel Moon was good, okay. personally contact me and we'll have this debate. You get flooded with a single DM. Zach maybe. from Warn and, Warn and Wout is a secret Rebel Moon stand. Yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe. All right. So we've got Ming from Ming. Ming Ming. The Supreme Overlord. Uh, again, this is some, this is some legacy content. Maybe we'll put up some photos of Ming watches. You can listen to us. We can listen to Felix interview Ming. Um, we'll be back at the end to say goodbye, to tuck you in. If it if it's the we'll evening. Just weirdly pop listening. back up on screen. We just pop back up. Uh, yes. Until we figure out how we kind of insert guests, we'll probably just bring them into a Zoom call and slot them in that way. We haven't figured need, it out. We need to record like about 45 minutes of B-roll of us just being silent going. It's that or we play like a car game in the corner whilst... Oh, yeah. The audio plays, or we just sit there. You can just, I can record myself editing the audio and be like, mm, this is a great interview. Oh, Felix was really on fire there. Yeah. Oh, good question, Felix. Mm. But I think, well, as we we'll work it out, as we roll anyway, the video out, we will work it let's out. Let's bring in Ming. Um, it's quite funny, actually. We're pulling out a business card. Yeah, I'm pulling out a business card and. Supreme Overlord. Yes. Nice. <laughs> sure. I yeah, got promoted yeah, yeah. from Benevolent Dictator because I'm not CEO anymore. Uh, so there is still a Benevolent Dictator? No. No. Okay. He's got to meet people so he's CEO. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a public-facing business card. It's guy. a public-facing yeah, business card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Basically, the creative part and the operational financial corporate part sure. had to separate because it, we're getting to the point where look, we're six years in. Yeah, you're getting grown up. 62 references in six years. Our yeah. fifth anniversary release was reference number 50. Nice. And that gives you an idea of how much creative yeah. stuff is going on. Yeah. Originally, I designed things in Photoshop and on paper and had our sure, partners sure, translate sure, from sure, 2 sure. into 3D. Yeah. Translation wasn't always what, what we expected. Wanted, it, was yep. di- it was difficult to, to make that work. Um, now, we've we gotten to the point that, obviously, I learned CAD at some point, learned yeah. more about construction. Um, next year onwards, I'm basically doing almost final construction already. Yeah, okay. Which is a big change. Uh, it also comes together with another big change. Um, so next year we are going to be starting our own Swiss facility. Whoa. We'll have to take Swiss made off the back though because that one qualification of having to be constructed and designed yeah. in Switzerland is no longer present because I do it in Malaysia. Yeah. It's kind of ironic yeah, given sure. that we're more heavily invested. We're now more invested. Swiss but exactly. cannot legally be Swiss. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think people care. No, I don't. I don't I, it's, I think, an increasingly uh, meaningless attribution. Yeah. Um... I'm aware I don't have too long with you. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm good, so it's... Uh, look, maybe maybe we'll do it. I've got, it's, it's a symposium I've got after this. I'd like to see it. But okay, yeah. cool. No, it's all right. These things happen. Um, the LW, which I'm guessing stands for lightweight. It does. Hey. It does, yeah. Uh, yeah. I find it amazing. So it's... it's Give me like the, to, the top, you know, 10 second spiel about what this watch is. Normally, I have props for this. Yeah, that's okay. Like, we can, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, two sheets of A4 paper and 9.6 grams, depending on how stingy your, your GSM procurement is. Yes, yeah. your procurement person is for, for the office yeah. copier. Uh, we're at 8.8 grams. You're right. 
And that's it's, just the watch head only is 8.8? Yes, yes. And the with strap the strap, all of 1.6 grams. Yes. I, I, I tried it on the wrist. You did? Okay, so you, um, you tried the engineering prototype? Was it uh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. Okay. I tried so that. You, it's yeah. incredible. Um, and it's a... Um, there's, there's a f- there's few wristwatch wearing experiences I've had that compare to it. So this yeah, actually yeah. makes you question philosophically what is a watch? Because if you want something that just tells the time as light as possible, yeah, I give you a chip and a syringe and a RFID reader, sure, and then you've got sure you've yeah, got time. Yeah, we could right. have like a sticker with like a cell in it or something. Exactly, yeah. and but that's not a watch. So yeah. the thing is, we wanted to make something where I, I show anybody who's even not a watch person go look. What is this? That's a watch, which yeah. means round hands, decent size. You can wear it under you know whatever normal conditions. Yeah. There's no special care you need to take with it. Yeah. Um, it's got to be reliable, which means that we, we don't want to make a, have a special movement made out of string. Yep. Um, it, it runs an ETA 2000, but it's a, it's a heavily modified one. Yep. Um, and here's a weird one. I want it to be metal because I wanted to feel that thermal transfer. It's got to not feel plastic. I know this one is white and looks like some strange ceramic material. Mm-hmm. Um, plasma electrolytic oxidation coating over the magnesium alloy, which has not been... Uh, which has not been given the final cosmetic yeah, uh, epoxy yeah, sealant. Yeah, yeah. Same with this. This is non-final. They're, they're, engineering, yeah. uh, they're engineering samples. Um, I've got a few questions. Shoot. This, I, I felt this way when I strapped that on, that sort of uh, ridiculous like joy. Like, I just laughed. You yeah. know? It was, it's, it's surreal. It's, it's stupid. It's, 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 it's wild. We had to add the running indicator because otherwise you go, is there, the, yeah. we didn't give you a move. It's just, yeah, it's just two it's hands. The, like it's a dummy. Ball. Piaget out, Altiplano, ultimate concept, similar yes, feeling. Some yes. some super light, you know, Richard Mills have a similar feeling. Yeah. They they are respectively, you know, million dollar and, you know, half million dollar watches. Well, I mean, there's also why we're caveating. We, we think yeah. we have to work within the constraints that we had. Yeah. Budget, size, conceptual constraint, but, executability. I mean, my, my question, though, sort mm. of around this is like, you've done this, you know, a little plucky up and comer, you know, not quite micro brand, not quite, you know, big know Swiss dog, you know, but you've done it without, you know, massive R and D and a impressive, you know, sort of multiple patents and partnerships. You've done it. That's like 20, 20,000 ish. It's, we'll we'll it's just under 19, five. Well, great bargain. Um, but, but legitimately it is like it's for, compar- if, for its comparables. I think yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, how, how does that feel to sort of, to to be like the lightest watch in the world. Like if this was, you know, Bulgur or something, there'd be yeah. you know, a whole world tour and we've been pretty low key about it. I you know, know I realise we've I, been very low maybe key. Maybe too low key? I, I don't know though. Uh, the, you're probably right. I think we're just generally too low key in ge- in yeah. you know in, in general across the board. But I think that's a consequence also of having a, a small team. Yep. You know. Um most of us are focused on product and customer service. Yep. Because to me, that's where the that's you know that's where the important stuff lies. Sure. I mean, I, I can have a budget of ten. I spend yeah. nine on marketing, one on product. Yeah, it'll work a couple of times. Eventually, people go, "What is this?" I mean, we tend to spend nine point nine on product and like point one on marketing, if that. Yeah, yeah, I think, and that's like basically this is the first fair we've been to. Yeah, you know? I want to ask you about that in a second because also I mean, like historically, you know, you don't seem to have any issue selling out, and why market if you're you know, there's less of an impetus to... Well, it's uh, not just that. I mean, yeah. I, I think that we, we need to we need to be a little bit careful about... Um, how should I say this? The more cerebral and, and unusual stuff we make, yeah. showing a photo is one thing, showing a video is another thing, and then yeah. physically picking that up... You need to say up, this. Yes, you're right. It's very different as well. Yeah. So there's a tactility, and even, even with our regular pieces, even with our entry-level pieces... You've got two eyes. I design stuff with reflections and layering uh, and everything else, right? The camera's got one eye. That's it. Yeah. You have no spatial perception, no depth perception. The watch is not as alive as it could be. So we realize that. And we realize there are a lot of people going, well, I don't kind of know. And then they see them in person and go, damn, it's, old, it's yeah. different, yeah. you know? So I, I think that's I think that's important. Um, yeah. We wanted to do this a lot earlier. And I mean, when we were large enough as a brand to start traveling and seeing people, then the pandemic hit. Uh, Nobody could travel. We can travel, yeah. and you know now it's sort of picking up again. So end of last year, this year we're starting to go and visit people, and, and so I'll, again, I don't want to forget about the whole Dubai Watch Week thing. Mm. Um, you're you're starting a, your own Swiss facility, or you're partnering with with what's no, no, the, we're yeah. starting our own Swiss facility. So you're you're becoming doing that. You're traveling the world. Like, uh, what does mean? What do you you know? What's the 10, 20 year vision? Are you 
do you have a hall in, you know, Watchers and Wonders? Are you, you know, going toe to toe with with some of the sort of more corporate groups? Like, is it that sort of growth that you aspire to, or are you happy where you're at? If you asked me five years ago, even three years ago, do we see ourselves here? Yeah. No. Because there is an element of preparedness, work, effort, and just sheer dumb luck. Yeah. You know, I, I never discount the luck factor. Yeah, or the never, timing or whatever. Or the timing yeah. or whatever it is. And basically, the, the factors that are outside your control. I never discount that because I think that's very, um, it would be very arrogant to, to assume that everything is down to your own yep. doing. We're not planning to be at that end of the market because I think it's going to be very difficult to give everybody the same customer service experience. It's going to be very difficult to be the same brand that we are today at that you know, three, four, five times scale. Mm. You know? and, and I don't think I want to do that because at that point, you've got this massive fixed entity that needs to run. Yep. And then we need to sell a certain number every year to keep that running. I mean, yep. that, puts, that puts pressure on the creative side yeah. in a way that's may let up us having to release products that are not something. what you want well basically at the moment we make whatever the hell we want yeah i mean sure. that's it's a it's a very egotistical arrogant yeah. thing to say but th- there's a reason for it we make think we make basically whatever whatever we like and we realized early on like well we're designing the diver none of us mm-hmm. are really dive watch people but trying to design a diver there's so many expectations and constraints around it that you're quite limited before yes. people go that's not a diver yeah, and trying to design a watch for a market that we thought we needed to address without fully understanding what that market is or, or what that piece should be as as a personally, yeah, right. Um, it just showed us we shouldn't be doing that. We sh- we should be making the watches that we like. It's it's for instance why they're a certain size. Um, they're not really extremely dressy, extremely sporty, extremely yeah. whatever. They're not gendered. I mean, it is a watch. Yep, yeah. you know. Do with it as you please. Wear yeah. it as you please. Yeah. You know, whoever may wear it can wear it. Can wear it. So what? Uh, what's your rough annual production at the moment? About five thousand watches a year. What, is are you ha- happy with that? Would you, would you like to see that? Because you said you know five years ago I didn't imagine I'd be here. Yeah. Today, do you not imagine that you'll be, or are you sort of now starting to think longer term? I think we may change the product mix a bit. So I want to do more of the interesting stuff, like the really extreme interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, we will always continue to have accessible entry-level pieces because you're, I think You're that's, moving a little bit up, up in the price chain. On average, yes. Yeah. At the entry level, a little bit. That's yeah. to counteract well, the fact that... Everything's gone up. Well, the same... You know, the movement we started with yeah. is now twice as expensive as yeah, it was yeah. when we started. And that's before we add the modifications and decoration yeah. that we do. So by yeah. the time you count that in, it's like four times more expensive than when we started. Yeah. So obviously, we can't sell the watches at the same price. But what I can do is I give you more, right? Sure. So if, if the price goes up by 20%, I give you, you know, 30 40% more. That's that's what I want to try and do. Yeah, so, so bigger watches, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So 47 millimeter. We're coming after Panerai. Eventually, we're going to do a, a 60 millimeter <laughs> we wear on a belt. No, but... I, I think we, you know, it's it's important for me to for me to explain this. You, I don't know whether you've uh, you've seen any of the recent pieces yet, but this yes, is I new, love this. Yeah. So this so is this a, is a new the, entry level piece. Yeah, yeah, sand. Yeah. It's got a super deep relief dial. Yeah. Um, you know, most dials are somewhere between 0. 0.5, 0. 0.8, one millimeter thick at most. This is like one point seven because we wanted that level yeah. of relief. Yeah. You know, the the case detailing on this I think is is honestly superb. It's a very refined case. Um, the case makers are the same guys who, who do our, our high-end pieces as well. So yep. the, the, the tolerances and standards are the same. You know, the first yep. time we worked with this case maker, they sent me two samples, and, uh, three samples, and said, do you want 10, 25, or 50 micron ra- radius on the edges? You know, they even asked. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I want a crisp case, but I don't want it to cut me, and I don't want it to feel melted. So you know, yep. we're we'll using 25 micron. But the point is, this is the kind of thing we put into yep. our entry-level piece. And the Solita, like that's a Solita, yeah? That's... You uh, see, the fact that you had to ask yeah. is good. Yeah, exactly. Like, it does not look like a 2824 clone or whatever. You, you know, it doesn't look like what exactly. you get in. Exactly. It's got, you know, some sort of, I don't know, knack finishing and a little open worked this and that. It's I mean, a, it's a, it's it, to keep, stylistically, I would be it's very to, happy with this. Exactly. A, yeah. So the thing is, we wanted to not put display backs on our entry pieces yeah. until we had something worth looking at. Yeah. 100%. You know, Interesting. So we, we put the production budget where it matters, but. Even then, I think there are a lot of things that trickle down from the higher end pieces into um, into things like this, right? 
So we, we have, uh, we developed a ceramic luminous material in Sapphire, for instance. It's, it's not an entry level piece. Nobody else is doing things like that. So we're at your bar watch week. Yep. Um, uh, and this is your first formal trade show it is. appearance. It is. We, we gate crashed Silent QP in 2017. Sure. It was like this little table in the cafeteria and one watch. It was yep. kind of funny. Yep. Uh, but this is the first time we've been a, an official exhibitor. I mean, you can tell because when I walk in, there are. I've been stopped and asked for my ticket like about six or seven times. Yeah, yeah, it's well, very funny. Jean Claude Beaver does not get that. No. Uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's it like? How are you finding it? As a because this is my first time here as well, in a slightly different capacity. But I've attended other shows in the past, and I feel like the the. Community here feels the sense of community here feels stronger than in other places. I, I don't know whether it's because I'm also seeing a lot of familiar faces. Yep. But there's also people like moving around in groups and like come and look at this. Okay, we yeah. see the same people at the booth coming back three, four times, bringing different people, which is super cool. Clients as well, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's a it's a mixed bag. I mean, we've got we've got some of our like very good clients flew in, not just for us, but because they're seeing yeah, there's else, a lot right? of yeah, so there's, there's clients a lot of, of a lot of people here. Exactly. Yeah. So that there's there's like very familiar. Uh, oh, Super strong supporters who we've yeah. seen at many other sh- many other events we've done. Um, we've got people who live in the region. They've got like one or two watches, uh, and they're like, "Oh, we can finally see other stuff. It's great!" And you know, yeah. we'll meet the team. And we've got people completely new. Yeah, and we've got people who've got. I guess in the middle, they wanted to see, but they're not sure. So sitting on the fence. I mean, this is it's an interesting mix of of, of people. Yeah, I th- I think you're right. There is a, a it does feel more community ish because I think because it's a bit smaller. It is, like, yeah. It's it's, it's the same community, just less because of we kind of overflow into their booths sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, well, you know, it's you know what is it? All all rising tides raise all boats. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I, mean, I, hope, so. I hope so. And are you, are you stopped uh, by the Siddiquis, or is that are you here as a? <sighs> not yet. Watch this space. No, it's not. It's actually the whole. It's the whole question around retail or not retail. We started off yeah. not retail because nobody wanted to retail us at the start. And we, we've basically built on that business model to try and deliver value yeah. all the time. And that also means that the margins that retail expects are not there. Can I know that's cliched. No, 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 I understand. But they're really, really not there. Would that would that have to change? Like if you moved into like a split direct to re- and retail model? It would. You'd have to yeah, either would. like take a hit on the retail or yeah. you'd have to put prices up across the board. Retailers won't take a hit. No, you would on you know which we can't do yeah, because sure. then we'd be You've subsidized. Such in, hard costs. In yeah. order to in order to in order to to give retailers anything approaching my acceptable margins, we'd be subsidizing watches. Yeah, sure. So we can't we can't do no, that. that. Makes no sense. Um, I mean, the other thing is we may not have anything to put in the stores. The most important thing to me though is the consumer experience is going to be completely different, and I, I think it's going to be very difficult to find the right people to sell our pieces, who are. The kind of watch geeks that we are, and the kind of watch geeks our customers are, to appeal to the same kind of attention to detail and all the little bits and pieces. I I, I disagree with that. I think. Well, there's another factor you got to yeah. throw in. If your commission is significantly less because the margin's less, yeah. What are you going to sell? It's difficult. You're I'm not Rolex, yeah. right? No, no, no. You're not and Rolex. But what's what does this cost? That's thirty nine fifty Swiss francs. So that's our entry level piece. Three thousand nine hundred. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just under four. If I come into a a store, and I'm looking for something independent, something yep. inter- interesting, something cool. Yeah. Higher end stuff is either out of my reach, right, for a range of reasons. Right. This is some of the most interesting stuff at that price point. I don't, but I don't think we'd be in the same kind of place as the higher end stuff because of the price because point. Of the price. Yeah. I think you. Oh, anyway, it's, it's, it's your, tricky. yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's tricky. I mean, it's not that we don't want to do it because I think yeah. having more visibility is great. Yeah. But it's just tricky to try and figure out where that balance is. I think if we do retail. It's got to be something along the lines of we do one specific model. It's not even Dalgar, and not even an yeah, issue. We do one sure. specific it's, model yeah. that has no analog, and you can only buy yeah. it through that channel. Yeah, cool. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but for us to say I'm going to do a different different color dial and then put it in a retail channel, this does not because you're going yeah. to annoy so many people. It's it's a yeah. I'm, uh, I mean, yeah. there's also a discounting question which we haven't even talked about. Oh, right? we don't we never talk about the discounting question. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Everybody, everybody will try their luck, and they will yeah. ask. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. And then we will say, politely, no. No, we'll say if if it's in your interest for me not to give you a discount. Yeah, it's in your own interest because if I give you a discount, next guy will know, and then the guy after that will know, and then eventually it's a race to the bottom, and that means your secondary value is not preserved. 
Yeah, Which, I, it's true. I mean, I have issues with buying for secondary value or considering secondary value, but that's very. It's not. It's not. It's not the buy and flip thing yeah. I'm talking about. But it's more like in the '90s there were in the interesting early 2000s the brands were discounting 70, 80 percent. Sure. And these were pieces that were genuinely horologically interesting. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of sad because they never recovered from that. And it means mm. that now you've got one hand tied behind your back because you go, okay, retail price is 100. Actual selling price is like 50, you know, or, or 70. The expected selling price is 50. The brand perception yeah. of brand value is like 50. So how are you going to actually deliver 100 worth of value? You can't. You don't have the production budget for it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to be at that point. Um, I'm aware we need to probably wrap in sure. soon, but I do want to ask a few things. Yep. Um, back to the watch, back to the lightweight. Yep. I don't remember too much from high school chemistry, mm-hmm. but I vividly remember setting magnesium on fire. Oh yeah, it's totally flammable. They banned it from Formula One because they, they sure. couldn't put the fires out. How have you worked with that? Can I set fire to your watch? What if, if I really wanted to, but I would not, we would not talk again after that. We would not speak again. Like, uh, <laughs> I jokingly... There's an extinguisher I, in the corner there. I, <laughs> just only for your appointment. So. Exactly. exactly. Um, they keep it there just in case. Because Dubai's shit, quite warm. Ming's coming in. We're going to bring in the... Yeah, Dubai's quite warm. It's not raining today. Update the fire safety protocols. I, I chatted to, I believe, Caroline, Caroline uh, at your booth. I could have been wrong with that. Carlotta? Carlotta, yes. yes. Um, totally what I said. Uh it, you, you need to have some sort of uh, disclaimer. Is, is there a legal concern of like if someone's wearing a watch and falls asleep with their hand in an oven? I think at that point you're a bit more worried about your hand. I don't know. Frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, like this is, is there a reason no one's made a watch out of magnesium or it's have not, they? It's not fireproofing. It, it has been done before. Yeah. Um, Bulgari did it at one point. Momo yeah. Design did it at one point. I think Richard Meal did it at for, one point. For cases or for internal for cases, elements? For cases. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for cases. Um, the reason they all stopped is because nobody could find a solution to the corrosion problem. Okay. It's it's reactivity, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The whole, to, oxi- to air. Exactly, even. it's yeah, oxidation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not specifically the air. You live in air, it's fine. Yeah, okay. It's mainly to sweat and moisture. Oh, so on your wrist in Dubai. Exactly. You'll be fine. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons why it took us four years to develop this because we tried about 30 different magnesium alloys. We landed up with a marine magnesium alloy that's used for the road to masks on, on helicopters. Yeah, okay. Right? There's another coating over the top that passivates the entire material. Yep. Make it renders the inner. Yep. And there's another coating on top of that to protect the coating, just to be sure. And we... How make, much weight do all those coatings add? A couple of micrograms. Yeah, okay. Because they're, they're basically in the surface. Yep. Um, we, we, tested, we tested these you know, under extended harsh conditions. Like, you, know, you leave it in a... 100% kind of saturated salt bath with electrolysis going on as well just to give it some more energy you just, to make just it a little bit of kick in there yeah. right swirl it around just agitate it as well with yeah. some sand yeah you know and, and basically we did that on a lot of different material samples and finishes and surface areas and all that just to make sure that it would not have any issues yeah because and the thing is you think okay you know what there's some degradation visible in Funny thing is you put a titanium case in there. Same freaking thing yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. So they're harsher mm. conditions under the, than we would normally test. Well, I mean, with. it's always a bleeding edge, though. If you're doing something, correct. Here, you gotta, yeah, correct. You got to be a bit more careful, correct. or not. Well, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're provisioning for it as best we can. Yeah. Um, adequate protections of adequate protections have been taken. Chemical inertness has been taken care of. It's not pure magnesium. It's actually magnesium, aluminium, silicon, vanadium, yep. manganese. Yeah. Um, both for machining and for chemical inertness. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Exceptional. Let's wrap it up there. Cool. Um, I really appreciate your time. It's lovely to meet you. I'm a you know, uh, long-time fan, first-time commenter. Is that Thank how it you. goes? Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, yeah, and well done on the watch. Can't wait to see more. Thank you very much. There we go, Andy. Dubai Watch Week, not only one of the most exciting and innovative watch uh, forums in the world, a host to some exceptional guests like myself. Mm. But more importantly, home, home to guests like uh, Ming, Ming Chen. Fascinating this... story. I didn't realise how many watches they've made. A lot. Really. A lot. They a have lot. a pretty ambitious release schedule. Yeah. Um, I guess a lot of the creative kind of comes from me himself and, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, a fascinating approach, really really cool approach. Uh, mm. Obviously, you just listen to the, the, the thing. Um, but I, I, we've got to stop thinking about them as a brand that's only been around a few years. Yeah, it's probably as long as I've been around, I think. In watches. Okay. Yeah, in watches, I think. It was sort of around the same time he sort of pivoted into the the actual watch watchmaking side of things. But, yeah, I mean, this is the thing, Felix. If you go to one watch fair a year and I go to one watch fair a year, we basically can get a year of content. No, no, no. We'll get better. Gravy. We'll get better. Um, 
seriously, please continue to let us know your thoughts. Uh, yep. Subscribe to YouTube. Join us on Discord. Uh, Instagram is ot.podcast. Yep. Uh, you can email us at ot.thepodcast at gmail.com. Substack as well. Uh, we've put out a few exclusive pieces of content. Got to write the next one. Got to write the next one. Um, it's it's quick. It's old school. It's old school watch content, really. A couple of pictures and some some thoughts and hot takes from Felix and I. Last one was on my yeah. Well, last one was on my uh, Helios C fourth in bronze. You know the main thing I forgot to include in that whole spiel, the serial number that I got given that I got allocated for that watch. Four twenty. No six six six. Oh yeah. Thank you, Jason. Helios watches. Nice. Felix. Better. See you next week. Slash time. Week after. See you then.